Hi, welcome back. Uh, in this video, I want to address winterizing this Nautilus system. Uh, go by the book, depending on what year your, your vehicle is, uh, mine's a 2022. I was really upset to find out that this manual is wrong, and if I would have done it again this year, like what happened last year, I'd have another broken water heater. I blame Camping World for not winterizing this correctly. They claim they went by the manual, what uh, Grand Design Reflection said you're supposed to do, and they bypassed the water heater. Now, you're not supposed to do that. <laughs> and I just happened to be browsing online, looking through different social medias and forums, and there's a lot of people that broke their water heaters that went by this book. I'll show you how to do it right. Pretty upsetting. So before I get into uh, winterizing, I want to do a quick inspection of all my plumbing. And that means taking the side of this panel off, getting everything out of here, because there is a flex hose that Grand Design used, and it's not just Grand Design, it's a lot of the manufacturers used. And they use PEX clamps and PEX fittings and that hose isn't intended to be done that way and if you did it in a home an inspector would go uh -uh, do it all over but trailer manufacturers get away with it and they shouldn't i'll show you that too once i get in here pex pipe is okay the clamps even plastic fittings but these hoses the flex hoses they're not meant to be clamped this way uh, they have a tendency to over time start to leak as the plastic material starts to spread out from the fittings. I had two of them right up there, those T's start to leak and I just clamped them to get by and they did end up sealing off. And I haven't seen any other leaks but I wanted to open all this area up and inspect them all. We'll check all these hoses and then I'll start winterizing. First thing we want to do is drain the gray tank, drain the black tank, drain the fresh water. Did all that. Now we want to make sure it's level. Did that. Turn off your water heater. Uh, my water heater's got a little switch in the side panel. Um, <clears throat> that switch turns off the water heater and the little panel in the bathroom for the temperature control. That's off. And then it basically refers you back to the Nautilus system on how to switch everything. So this is where everything goes wrong. <laughs> right here in the winterizing steps. Pretty simple. Drain all the low areas. And I'll show you how to drain that. And then you switch all the switches at a 45 degree angle. So you angle them. And then at, once they're all angled, then everything will just kind of drain out. And then it says to switch the red straight out to the left. Well, that bypasses your water heater. Now, when you run antifreeze through the system, you're not going to have it run through there. But in the steps, if you follow the steps when it comes to blowing it out, this says to blow it out at 40 PSI. I've heard of people using 40 PSI and breaking lines in the water heater. It's not quite strong enough to handle that and any surges in the system. Um, with pressure of water, it's a little different. I don't know why, but it just has something to do with its ability to hold those pressures. But I've also read to never get up to 40 PSI on your water system either. So if your water system, you're running your pressure from a campsite, say, and you don't know how much the pressure is, a lot of people know, put it on a, a regulator that'll, that'll regulate how much water. Well, a lot of those regulators will go up to 55 PSI. I have one that'll go to 45 PSI and I'm uncomfortable about using it. So I use a water line regulator that I can keep it below 40. And then when I blow out, 
I blow everything out at 30 and that works great. And I don't have any risk of breaking anything, mainly water heater. Those walls on that heating coil is really thin. So these are my low point hoses. Uh, originally, they were just these connections and I wanted to make it simpler and not have to just take the plugs out and make sure they're sealed again. So it's just a matter of opening both of those valves and then I'll open all the faucets and then everything will just drain out. And then I'll hook up a hose, uh, air hose, and put about 30 PSI in it and continue blowing everything out. And there's also a drain point on the heater and I'll show you that too. A water heater. This is the power switch I'm gonna make sure it's off. And then this There is a drain plug right here, and I believe you can take this one out too. I've got to verify, but I know this one has a filter in it. So we'll take that out, and it's in there pretty tight, so I might have to get some tools. And then you'll want to clean the screen out if there's any grime on it, and then that's where we'll want to make sure everything's blown out. And then we'll put that back in, and then we'll take it out again to make sure that there is antifreeze in it after we do the antifreeze. Okay, I've got all my faucets opened up. I've got all my low points opened up. I've got the water heater opened. Now, according to the manual, we switch each one of these on a 45 degree angle. And that will assist everything to just drain out with gravity. I'm hearing more flowing, so that works. So now I will hook up a plug here that I can blow it all out with my air compressor. Some people say you need to take this screen out and flip it around so it pushes in the one-way valve. Well, if you're pushing pressure against it, you don't need to do that. And my opening is big enough on my air compressor fitting that that screen is fine. So I'm going to attempt to do it this way and see if that valve does cause any problems. I have my gauge set up uh, on my air compressor at 30 and this gauge it surges to 30 and then drops down to 25 so I'm very comfortable with that. Okay now I've blown out kind of general lines. Now we need to close the valve on the water heater and close the low point valves, close all the faucets, and then I'll start pumping antifreeze into the system. But once I get the low point closed and the water heater closed, I'm going to leave the faucets open and give it some more air for just a little bit. Okay, I'm feeling good about just general area blowing it all out. Now I'm going to switch it to winterize and this needs to go up. The manual says it needs to go to the left. But that'll bypass the heater. We want that up. And we want the green one up. And we want the white one down. And the blue one out. And the black one out. What I did is I, I blew out all the lines, blew out all the system, faucets, everything, low points, and then turned everything off, opened this valve back up, and blew it out again. And you saw the squirt of water. So yeah, it's, it's good to now go back and do that on every single faucet. I'll put this plug back in and then I can, I can blow out and then I can start putting in the antifreeze. So I have this turned on to hot, and you can see I'm just barely giving it a little bit of air pressure, and it's kind of violent. <laughs> and it's only about 20, 25 PSI. So if I was just to put this on and leave it on, I'd be worried about damaging that water here. Do the 
thing with the cold. <laughs> Bit of water into the kitchen sink. Now that I've been blowing everything out, I'm going to open these for the last time and let any more water out that might have drained down. And then I'll blow it out just a little bit for a second. comfortable that I've got as much water as possible and the antifreeze will take care of the rest. Let's remove our air filler and hook up a small piece of hose and my jug. I have this little piece of hose. It says you can use a garden hose but it's just too much volume. It's hard to prime the pump. A smaller hose like this is easier to prime. Now, if everything's set correctly and all the faucets are off, which I'm comfortable they are, I can run my pump and it should siphon into the system and plug everything up. And once the system is pressurized, the pump should stop. You can see the level going down as it's filling up the system. I'm going to shut it off and make sure I've got everything closed so I'm not just pumping all this antifreeze right into my gray tank. Okay, there's no antifreeze coming out anywhere where I don't want it to. We'll part, turn the pump back on. Okay, I've got the pump fully pressurized now. Everything is shut off uh, as I open valves. Pump kicks on and it kicks back off. So now I can go around all the faucets and and run them until they're pink. And we'll start with the kitchen sink since it's the furthest distance. I don't know if that really matters, but I'll turn it to hot and run it till it's good and pink. Now I'll run it to cold. I'll get a lot of water. Good and pink. Now I need to go back out and check my gallon jug to make sure I have plenty so I don't lose prime on the pump. Whoa! Cold water? I'm gonna have a lot of air pressure on that one. Nice little bonus. Um, that is putting just enough pink into the P-traps so we don't have to worry about those P-traps freezing and breaking either. And now the cold water. Oh, we're good. Now I take the shower head off and I put it in there. I had a shower head freeze and break on me one time. So I get it up so it'll drain and then it doesn't freeze. All right, <laughs> now that I'm done, let's see just how much antifreeze. I typically use in my past travel trailers about a gallon and a half of antifreeze. This trailer used 
almost two gallons. So running it through the water heater, a water heater supposedly takes about two quarts. It's probably about right. Typical, one and a half, now about two. So the uh, on-demand water heater does definitely take the antifreeze, but I wanna check that now and make sure there's pink coming out of that drain. So to do that, let's turn off the pump. It's going to have pressure behind it. So when I release this end, We'll get a little bit of back pressure, but not that much. It's got some pressure behind it. I don't want it to come flying out. I just want to dribble a little bit. It might just come flying out. I'm going to have to relieve some pressure. I'm going to go get the pressure off at that outside shower. And I've got pink. Excellent. All right, well, according to the instructions, we have finished everything when it comes to winterizing all the system, but <laughs> there's one more step that a lot of people forget. I forgot it in the past, and I froze and broke a valve. It's a it's an anti-backflow valve. I'm not even exactly sure what it's called. That's on the black flush, and You'll get smell when that breaks, and I had it break under a kitchen or a bathroom sink. And when I went to flush the next year and didn't know it was broke, I sprayed water all over under the sink and it went all over the bathroom. So I had to replace that valve. Luckily, it wasn't too hard to get to, but some of these are pretty difficult to get to. So let's blow that out. You don't need to run antifreeze in it, you just got to make sure to blow it out. All right, well, I can't think of anything else when it comes to winterizing other than re removing my battery. So that's it for this. I just need to put everything back in. All right, well, thank you for watching. <laughs> Give me a thumbs up if you like what I'm doing. Subscribe if you haven't. Thanks again. Goodbye for now.